Know Now Channel presents Behavioral Economics. Note: This idea won a Nobel Prize in 2002. We all know that economics works with rationality. This means when someone makes a choice, he will always make the choice that benefits him more. Of course he will, why not? Even if you were a Samsung fan and iPhone hater, when someone gave you either the best product of Samsung with the price of $600 or an iPhone with the price of $1000 for free, you'd probably choose iPhone because it's the rational choice due to its value in the market. We know that in economics we choose the rational choice all the time, or do we? But this example was just to emphasize that we choose it even when we don't like it. But because it's simply the rational one to do, we do it almost all the time, but there are some cases that even rational people will choose the unrational choices. How? Let's see. Although behavioral economics is not simply unrational economics, it behaves like that in some cases. Note, behavioral economics is wider notion. It even contains Nudge theory, which is completely different story. But today we are only going to talk about the choice-based behavioral economics which behaves like unrational economics. Example number one. You are given two options. Have 55 winning chance of $1000 and 45 chance of taking nothing. Or just take $500 and go. You have probably already seen that the rational choice is gambling instead of taking $500 because the expected value of the first choice is $550. But behavioral economics shows that people including me and probably even you will take $500 and go. Example number 2. Ultimatum game. You and a guy are playing ultimatum game. The guy here is considered as your rival in Nash's game theory. Following the rules, this guy is given $100 and has to split with you, so he decides to make the deal. Let's say he decides to take $50 and also give you $50. If you accept, you both get the money, but if you refuse, then you both get nothing. Although rational economics says that even if he splits the money like 99 to 1, you should accept, because at least you are getting something. Studies, however, show that most of the people refuse 80 to 20 or 90 to 10 offers and accept only if it's higher than at least 30. Example number 3. Some people are just risk averse. Let's see if you are. Now, I'm flipping the coin. If it's head, I'll give you $100, but if it's tail, then you have to give me $60. Although mathematically it's obviously rational to take the risk, but some people don't, because they just hate to lose. Those people are just called risk averse. Reasons It's a fact that when we choose behavioral economics, we are economically doing the unrational, thus the wrong choice, but it doesn't mean our choice is wrong. Because we are not comparing the choices economically rational, but we are comparing them situationally rational. Explanation of example number one. Note, all these explanations are just my opinions. So, in example number one, we did not take the first option despite the fact that it had $550 expected value. Why? Because if we are comparing the numbers, we are also inspecting the ratios of bad, normal and good possible outcomes. In this case, the difference between 0 and 500 is way bigger than the difference between 500 and 1000. The loss of not getting 1000 and getting 500 is not a big deal, but the loss of not getting 500 and getting 0 is devastating. Example number 2. In this case, it's mostly about psychological factors. If it's your competitor in market, which is the case with Nash's game theory, then you may refuse the offer even if it's about $40 just to ruin his earnings attempts as well, which in most cases is accepted. Even if he's not your rival, it still hurts to get three times less than what he gets. Example number three. We always evaluate the situations instead of numbers we'll get, no matter what. The reason we choose the risk averse is simply because we play the game only once. There is a 50% possibility that we will lose $60 for nothing but the side of a coin. If we had a chance to play it multiple times, then we would definitely choose the risky option like risk managers in companies. The risk managers and financial managers always choose the one with the more probability of having money. Despite the fact that there always exists a certain amount of probability with loss. Thanks for watching, the link for the text is in the description and you may like or even subscribe for more videos like this.